Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, we do another very long exposure of this beautiful church in Venice, Italy. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramelli. I am still a French photographer living in the beautiful city of Paris, France and Los Angeles, California. And I make one to two tutorials per week. And I'm again with my friend Alex. Bonjour, Alex. Bonjour. <laughs> From Venice. Amazing professional photographer that does beautiful on exposure. Okay, so we are at this beautiful Santa Maria. Della Salute. Santa Maria della Salute, a beautiful church that you can see, very famous, iconic church of Venice. And so we have been thinking of shooting this church. So Alex was explaining to me that we're going to be shooting for maybe like 400 seconds. 400 seconds, if anybody moves, uh, he's going to disappear with a special filter, right? So this is like, I usually go to maximum to ND10, this is 12. Yes, this is ND12. So, because it's, it is still bright out here and there is a lot of people, so we do want to go at least like around 400, 350 seconds. So we're hoping to eliminate all the people walking around. Yeah, and the other thing, the, 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 the key trick was also to find a good composition. I find that the hardest thing to do when you do urban landscape is to find a foreground element. It's very easy to find a nice monument. Anybody can shoot this. Uh, you know, we can have a nice background with like a nice sunset. In this case, it's going to be, you know, a uh, dramatic or white sky. But what do you put in the foreground? I think this is what makes your photo and I hope my photo, uh, you know, pretty different is because we work a lot on a foreground element. Foreground, yeah. And the foreground element is going to be a puddle. We're going to make a photo. Like you make the pasta, we make the photo. And the way we make the photo is we're going to add some water. Yeah, we're going to add some, we're going to, well, there's a lot of water in the canal, so we're going to get some out and then put it on the ground. We're going to, yeah, exactly. And when you make a long exposure and you have a little puddle like this, it makes a perfect mirror. Yeah, it is going to be a beautiful shot. So we're going to do that and it's going to make a full one element. We have this as a middle element and a dramatic or white sky as a background element. So we have all three things. Yeah. And so first we're going to see, you know, we're going to try what, two, three hundred seconds, three hundred seconds? Three hundred is going to be good, yeah. And then if it's not good enough, we're going to go to five hundred seconds, you know, maybe like half an hour, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. This is going to be an adventure, but I hope you will like the result. Yeah. And so let's check out what we got back in Lightroom. Thank you again, Alex. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, check out his work on Venice. Amazing long exposure. I hope it inspires you to buy this filter to check out this technique because it's, it really is fun to have all the people disappear, to have the water look like a mirror and the clouds look very dramatic. It's, it's a really interesting type of photography and it works very good with black and white. Thank you very much again. No problem. So let's go to Lightroom now. All right, so to do the retouch we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be using Adobe Lightroom. Now in case you don't have Adobe Lightroom in Adobe Photoshop, Today, the only way to get it is through what we call the Creative Cloud. Just so you know, if you go to photosearch.com, my website, and you click on my gear, you will see there is a big banner here saying Authorize Affinity Pattern. If you click on that banner, mesdames et messieurs, you come to this page where you can get the Creative Cloud for photography, which is in your 12, like 11.99, you can get it for 9.59, which is basically uh, over two uh, euros uh, per month less. Well, and also it helps me to do free tutorials. Now this is in euro, but basically wh wherever you are in the world, it's gonna propose you a different deal if you click on that banner on my gear page in photosearch.com. Voila, let's jump over to Lightroom and see the photos we got with my friend Alex. So when you're in Lightroom and you're viewing a photo, if you press I, you can see on the top left, well, first the resolution. This was shot with a Sony A7R2, and I'm going to give you the raw file so you can see the file size is 5,000 by uh, 304 by 7952. It's a 46 million pixel file. And this, if you press I again, you can see how, how long was the exposure. This is 380 seconds at f16 ISO 100 with the famous ND12 filter. Now, the ND12 filter, I'm going to put a link uh, in the description of the video where you can buy this filter. 
the one Alex recommends is from Hoya, which I'm going to give you a link on Amazon. Uh, I don't have that filter and I'm actually going to buy it because uh, it's pretty awesome when you have a lot of people and to be able to do very long exposure during the afternoon. So what happens at 380 seconds is that you can see the sky, uh, all the, the sky is very blurry, but everything is pretty sharp, you know, we don't, almost everybody got erased and we see here a bit the puddle with the mirror effect. Now this is uh, 508 seconds, so it's a bit longer, it's, uh, it's a bit longer, it's a lot of seconds, it's uh, in minutes, it's almost, uh, almost nine minutes, and uh, so it's a long exposure, and what happens is what I observed is longer the exposure, more if you have a puddle, the water becomes a mirror. Okay, so these two photos were shot with the ND12 filter. Then I wanted to try the ND10 filter, which is the one I own, and so I shoot a photo at 150 seconds at f16, and look, it was really too bright. So then I shot a, another one at 60 seconds and um, with the ND10, and it was, um, it was better. Actually, I really like the fact that we can see the clouds here a little bit, and we can see the reflection here. So I can retouch either this one, which is a 508 second, or the 60 second. Now, if you want to see better, you can select both photos. So this, on my left, is the ND12, and on my right is the ND10. And I'm going to press C for compare, and then shift tab to get everything out. And then I can just zoom in. So on my left, I have the one that's shot with the ND10, and on my right with the ND12. Now you can see right away that with the ND12 and the lone exposure, we get a bit of more detail in the puddle than we get here. But on the other hand, with the ND10, we get more detail in the sky, so it's a compromise. Also, with the lone exposure on the right, uh, people have been more e erased. You see, you can see here, we can see this man completely, where there he's more blurry, uh, because this was a longer exposure. So, honestly, both photos are great. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to retouch the one that I like the sky like this, which is very soft like that, but still has a nice gradient, so I think I'm going to go for this one. I'm going to press T for the tool bar, and I'm going to click this one, I'm going to retouch this one. So the retouching is very little because most of it has been done in camera. But first thing is, you can go, you can either desaturate the photo at first, or you can go to black and white. Um, I usually actually go to black and white, and then what I do is I take this little tool, w uh, which is here, the, which is called the targeting tool, and I can just go up and down. I can click here, and when I go I'm going up, I'm making brighter whatever that color is. When I'm clicking down, I'm making it darker. So I think I'm going to make this a bit darker. Maybe I'm going to click here, make this a bit brighter. You just have to make sure that your values here on the right uh, don't go over 30, because you can get really weird stuff over 30, 40. So anyway, so that's my basic black and white. Now let's put on some dramatic. So I'm going to put up the shadows and bring down the highlights. But on this one, I don't think I'm going to actually bring down the highlights too much, a little bit, and even the shadows, not so much. Usually I do 100 plus 100, but this time, no. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to crush the blacks. So I'm just going to move to the left until I really get some nice blacks. I'm going to press the Alt key, maybe not that much, but I really want some really dramatic black here. I'm going to press I to take this out, and then I'm going to play around with the with the white uh, here, voila. So you want to make it fairly, fairly dark, something like this, that's a good basic, you know. And um, then I'm going to take a little brush, uh, or I can actually, you know what, take a red roll filter, and I want to write up this a little bit, so I'm going to want one big filter here, a red roll filter, and I'm going to invert it, invert mask, I'm going to feather it, and I'm going to add some clarity and some exposure so that we really see what's going on here. And one thing you can do is you can even do a, a couple, a bit less stronger, so I'm going to make it smaller. And then you can just right-click and duplicate it and put another one here just to make it more subtle. Uh, make sure that when you play around with this, your Show Edit pin here, um, you see Show Edit pin is on Auto. When it's on Auto, you can see the pins here, but when I move my mouse out into the menu, it all disappears so I can appreciate what I did. 
okay and I'm appreciating what I did so now I'm gonna right click I'm gonna duplicate it and I'm gonna put one up here okay maybe make it a bit smaller for the top here right click duplicate and make another one here right click duplicate and make us one here what I'm trying to do is to break the light okay this if it's too much you can just click on the filter and bring it down all I'm trying to do is have subtle th subtle changes in the light you know I don't want like I don't want this puddle I don't want this building to be led exactly completely even but you don't want to do too much you don't want people to say oh you put a circle there so you have to make it subtle it has to be subtle enough to be visible but not too strong so that people can say what did you do here what is going on okay I'm gonna make one here something like this maybe not that strong but just I always like to have one in the middle so that you know the idea is that the eye is gonna get drawn to the brightest part of the photo so there is one here so voila, I'm pretty much done with the retouch it was pretty fast you know just a little bit of dodging and burning and um, I think it's here it's a bit too dark so I might add a little graded filter here and on this grid filter just add a little bit of exposure make it maybe a bit lower and a bit brighter something like that. just yeah I like the vignette effect but I don't want it to be too strong okay so just some final retouching on this clarity let's play around with clarity on this one when there is cloud when there is cloud I never go plus clarity because I don't like what it does to the cloud but there's no cloud so I'm gonna add a bit of overall clarity which I d usually don't do but I like to. I might add a bit of contrast to make it even more crazy, and um, and then let's check the noise and uh, look look how sharp the photo is. It's really sharp. I love it. There is no noise and it's really sharp. Somebody asked me on YouTube the other day, it's like, how you do with noise uh, with such a low exposure? Well, if you had a hundred ISO and you properly exposed your photo like this one, you don't have any noise. Look, I haven't done any noise reduction and there is no noise and you can see for yourself because I'm giving you this raw file if you subscribe to my newsletter you cannot sell it you cannot use it in galleries because I will be doing it but you can play around with it and see for yourself the power of the Sony a7R2 but honestly this technique will work with any good cameras cameras over the last two years have become so good in uh, in noise uh, you know noise reduction they're not the sensors are a lot less noisy they can do very sharp photos so even if you don't have such a eye hand camera, you should be able to use this technique. The, the key point is to buy the ND10 or ND12 theater. Okay, so noise reduction, you know what? I'm not gonna put any for now. Well, I'm actually gonna put maybe, when there is no noise, I always put like 10 of noise reduction, and then I'm gonna put like about 90 of sharpening. Okay, I want this to be really sharp. But then what's very important is you press the Alt key and the masking tool, because it's gonna mask at your sharpening, and you want your whole skull to be black. Anything which is black is not gonna get sharpened. I only want sharpening to be on, on, the, on the buildings and nowhere else. Okay, that's good. Let's see what lens correction is going to be. And about lens correction, it's going to take a lot of the vignetting effects. Uh, let me see. Do I want that or not? Yeah, why not? Why not? Remove chromatic aberration. That doesn't matter because it's a black and white color and chromatic aberration is color. Um, let's see. Upright auto. Let's see if it does something. This is a little correction which might be useful. I don't think I want... Yeah. I think yeah. I don't know about the uh, profile question. Usually, what I do at this point is I, I let it rest like a nice, you know, recipe to make pancakes. You let, you know, your recipe to rest a little bit, and then you come back to it in half an hour or an hour, and you look at it with fresh eyes and see what you want to do. But that's right now. That's what I'm. S what that's what I'm doing. Uh, you can also check. Use the uh, spot healing brush tool. Click visual spots. Oh, there is some spots, and you can erase them. Now, it's really hard to not get spots when you do so long exposures and your uh, shutter is closed at f16. It's really hard. I mean, I cleaned up the sensor, but just before doing the tutorial and you see I still have spots. And I was using a you know, good cleaning kit. So um, the reason for that is that, you know, more you close your aperture, more it's gonna be sensible, sensible to spots. Don't ask me why, I don't know exactly why, if you know why, you can leave a comment in the YouTube video. Anyways, tell me if you like this retouching in the a, in a video. I'm not finished with the spot, but you get the idea. I'm going to take all the spots out. Well, uh, that's the basic result. And um, check out my partnership with Adobe. If you don't have the Creative Cloud, you can economize you know, $2 or $2 or 
two euros per month, which is pretty cool. Hope you like this, and I will see you in another episode, mesdames et messieurs. Do you want to get hundreds of raw files from all over the place where you can play around with? Do you want to get amazing free Lightroom presets, free brushes, free Photoshop actions? All you have to do is enter your email address. You will receive an email. You can then create an account, and then you can access this free lesson tab. You can choose from over 200 free lessons. Every free lesson is going to have source files for you to download and play around with. It's a great way to learn photography, learn post-processing for nothing. No money. It's all free. It's a gift to you as a member of photosearch.com. So thank you and welcome, and let's do some photos together.